infinite wisdom uh, in your wise counsel Lord uh, you've already calculated uh, you've already foreordained God uh, you've already given an expiration date uh, to every trial that's in our lives tonight uh, hallelujah Jesus uh, that means trouble won't last always uh, that means hallelujah that we're not going to be consumed by it uh, but God it's going to make us better it's going to make us stronger in the name of Jesus and this is why we lift our voice God and begin to magnify you Lord this is why oh God we begin to lift up holy hands unto you and give you praise God in the midst of everything we see right now Lord Jesus we begin to bless your holy name hallelujah hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus we praise you tonight oh God I come against tonight yes Lord every spirit that's not like you God I come against Lord the spirit of unforgiveness God Lord that's trying to creep into the hearts of your people that's seeking to creep into the minds of your people Lord I come against God the spirit of unforgiveness tonight Lord that attribute that's from the devil himself oh God that spirit that declares hallelujah that vengeance should be taken by us Lord that we should hallelujah be consumed by our passions uh, and consumed by our emotions uh, and Lord take revenge against others uh, Lord when you clearly stated in your word uh, hallelujah that vengeance belongs to you uh, God but you've given us the ability uh, hallelujah to do good unto all men uh, you've given us the ability to do good to them that do evil unto us uh, you've given us the ability to bless them that curse us uh, you've given us the ability to speak a blessing blessing over those God uh, hallelujah that curse us and despise us God uh, those that despitefully mistreat us and misuse us uh, God you have put your spirit down in us uh, and given us your DNA oh God uh, and given us your divine ability father hallelujah to do better God uh, because you said if we do good unto them uh, we would heap coals of fire upon their heads uh, oh God therefore I pray against unforgiveness I come against the spirit of unforgiveness now in Jesus name I come against the spirit of bitterness Lord that's seeking to take up residence in the lives of your people I bind it up I bind it up I bind it up in the name of Jesus hallelujah God I even believe with everything in me God there are some people that are suffering with sickness and disease because they are holding on to bitterness hallelujah anger clamor and unforgiveness but father I believe in the name of Jesus God that if they would let go of the hurt if they would let go of the rejection if they would let go of the things God that are not pleasing unto you God I believe with everything in me tonight you will give them a new beginning God you will give them a new start oh God so father my prayer tonight is that you would help your people God release the offense God release the offense tonight yes Lord help your people God to release the offense Lord don't let us walk around in an offended spirit with an offended spirit in an offended state oh God but my prayer tonight God is that you would help us God to release the offense Lord and walk in the liberty wherewith you have made us free Lord you've created us new creations you've made us new beings in Christ Jesus and father therefore I pray tonight uh, that we would crucify the old nature uh, that we would let go of the old man uh, hallelujah we put on the new man tonight uh, which is renewed after God and righteousness and true holiness uh, in Jesus name uh, help us Lord uh, help us oh God uh, help us tonight Lord uh, help us tonight God uh, help us tonight oh God uh, help us to be more like you help us to be transformed into your image help us to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ in Jesus name oh God help us to circumcise our spirit man help us to circumcise our heart tonight and take away everything oh God that is not like you God Lord to cut away the flesh tonight cut away the desires of the flesh tonight cut away the cut away the cut away the 
say yeah Jesus help us to cut away the desires of our flesh Lord help us to cut away the will of the flesh Lord Lord don't let us just be sedated hallelujah but father I pray that you would cut it away Lord cut it away oh God cut it away oh God cut it away Lord in Jesus name take away the reproach of sin take away the reproach of the sinful nature God and help us to be more like you Jesus hallelujah oh God my prayer tonight Lord is that your people would get refocused and reprioritize you Lord hallelujah to your rightful place God Lord where there are those God that are consumed with the cares of this life it's my prayer tonight God that you would disrupt oh God that you would disrupt that line of thinking God that you would pull down that philosophy God that you would pull down that ideology God hallelujah the spirit of self absorbedness father those that are self absorbed I pray tonight God that you would take oh God away that line of thinking oh God and Lord begin to renew the spirit of their mind God begin to touch their mind tonight begin to restore their mind to serve you with all of their heart in Jesus name God, those that refuse to suffer, those that seek to pull themselves out of their trials prematurely. Father, I pray for tenacity tonight. I pray for endurance tonight. I pray that the fruit of long suffering will be developed in them, Father. In Jesus' name. For you said if we suffer with you, you said we will also reign with you. God, therefore, there's a blessing in the suffering. There's a blessing in the suffering tonight. There's a blessing in the suffering, oh God. There's a blessing in the suffering, oh God. In Jesus' name, Father, my prayer tonight, God, is that you would change the hearts of your people. God, give us a heart for the harvest. Lord, give us a mind to go into the highways and the hedges and compel men to come unto you. My prayer, God, is that you would send revival. God, as we're going through these lessons, Lord, as we're walking through your word, God, you begin to show us, Lord, Lord, how to condition ourselves, how to condition our minds, how to condition our thinking, how to condition, Lord, our hearts, how to condition our attitudes, how to condition our behaviors, God. Hallelujah, to resemble you. Lord, for the redeemed must resemble the redeemer. In Jesus' name, God, I give you praise tonight. Yes, Lord, I give you glory. In Jesus' name, you said it's not your will that any perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so, Lord, it's my prayer tonight, God, that you begin to save the lost, Lord. Give us the gospel, Lord. Hallelujah. You've given us the gospel. Now, Lord, give us the faith to go into the highways and the hedges and compel them by the gospel to share the good news with them in these bad times, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're troubled on every side, but we are not in distress, oh God. Hallelujah, we are persecuted. Hallelujah, but we are not destroyed. Hallelujah, we are cast down, God, but we are not forsaken. Hallelujah, therefore, Father, my prayer tonight is that you would help us. Help us to go forth and do your will. Help us to go forth, Lord, and share the good news of the gospel. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray tonight that you would breathe on your people everywhere. Give us strength to stand and be the ones you call for in this last and evil day. God, my prayer tonight is that you would touch the hearts and mind of every believer. God, that you begin to increase our faith through your word. Lord, help us to walk in the spirit, live by the spirit, and do what you have called us to do. In Jesus' name, we glorify you, we magnify you, and we praise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the people of the Lord, give him praise tonight. The people of the Lord begin to magnify Jesus. The people of the Lord begin to shout hallelujah in praise to the Lord. We give him glory. We give him honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you tonight in the name of the Lord. It's an honor for us, amen, to be together tonight to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen for us to come together Amen. And share from the word of the Lord. Amen. To encourage one another, to uh, inspire one another. Amen. To hear what thus saith the Lord. Anybody believe that tonight? We are here to hear. Amen. What thus saith the Lord. Amen. The scripture lets us know. 
Amen. He that hath in the ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Amen. And I believe tonight with everything in me, hallelujah, that the Spirit of the Lord is speaking unto us. And we must have, amen, an ear to hear what the Lord is saying in this hour. Uh, how many of you believe that Jesus is coming back? Amen. Jesus is soon to return. And this is why it's so important for us to bring emphasis, to bring focus to, amen, the things that God is saying because he is soon to return. And because he's soon to return, we've got to make sure that our lives are aligned with his word. Our lives are aligned with his will. We've got to deny this flesh. We've got to get rid of the fleshly thoughts, the fleshly attitudes, the carnal nature. We've got to, amen, work really diligently, amen, to take this nature off. And to put on the new nature, amen, to put on that nature which is just like Jesus Christ, amen. And so I want you to, amen, be encouraged tonight. But most importantly, I want you to take seriously, to take seriously the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. We see the signs around us, but the Bible tells us that the end is not yet. Anybody read that in your Bible? Amen. The end is not yet. So that means what? Things are going to get worse before they get better. Amen. Things are going to continue to deteriorate. But it's important for us as believers in Jesus Christ to make sure, to make very sure, amen, that we are rooted and we are grounded in the word of the Lord. Amen. That we live a life that is pleasing unto God. Amen. That we're walking in the spirit so that we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Am I in the book tonight? Amen. Amen. Well, we want to we want to go to the word of the Lord. We greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, giving honor to my wife tonight. Amen. And thank God for all of you that are in the sanctuary. Those of you that are online tonight. Amen. I do encourage those of you that are online, even those of you in the sanctuary, feel free to share this broadcast, like it so it shows up and appears, amen, on your timeline so that others can, amen, join in and hear what the Lord is saying. You should be excited about, amen, the word of the Lord because uh, as we think about Amen. The word being a lamp to our feet and a light unto our pathway as we think about the word being our daily bread. Amen. As we think about the power of the word. Amen. How it can, it can suddenly change your life. It can suddenly change your circumstances and your situation. When we think about, amen, the power of the word of God. Amen. We should be willing to share it everywhere that we go. Everywhere that we walk. Everybody we run into, everyone we come into contact with, amen, we should want them to know the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Well, we've been discussing, amen, uh, a subject condition for revival, amen, that's been our subject for, amen, our Bible study conditioned for revival. We, amen, when you think about even exercising, you, you are conditioning your body. Those that run marathons, those that do weightlifting, amen, those that are involved in sports, there is a process of conditioning before they arrive to the competition. Amen. And so all we're, we're using the same concept that we ourselves, the people of God, it's important for us to ensure that we are conditioning ourselves. Amen. Because revival is coming. As a matter of fact, I believe revival is already here. Amen. I believe that now. Now, I, I want to address something. I want to address something. I, I think about, amen, the incident that happened over in Hoover. I think about, amen, uh, that it's all over social media now. It's gone viral. Amen. The incident down in Montgomery. I think about, amen, uh, that some incidents, incidences that took place, amen, in other areas of the state. There's a lot of attention on our state right now, but it's for the wrong reason. 
Oh, God, y'all are y'all quiet on me tonight. We have a lot of attention on our state right now, but it's for the wrong reasons. Amen. So, so, so even with that in mind, if the word of the Lord has come, amen, that revival is coming to our state. This should encourage the saints more than anything now to pray and to contend for revival. To pray and ask God, amen, to let your spirit be poured out upon men and women everywhere that people may receive the truth of your word, that people may receive your spirit, amen, that people can come into right fellowship and right relationship with our father anybody believe that tonight amen so we've got to make sure that we don't get distracted hello somebody we we got to make sure that we don't join the bandwagon and start talking about chairs that's all people want to talk about now the chairs and how we don't need guns we have chairs and we got all of this stuff we need to let that foolishness alone we need to let the devil amen not, not even give him that attention let that mess die down and let us focus on what God spoke and what God said which is his plan to bring revival into our state Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. And so because we are looking for revival, I just want to briefly review, amen, how we have defined revival. I briefly want to go there. We're going to talk through, amen, how the redeemed must resemble the redeemer. We're going to pick that back up. But, but first of all, I want us to go back to what revival is. Do we really understand what it is that we're looking for? Do we really understand what it is that we're pursuing? Do we really understand what it is that God intends to do and how many of you if, if, if we were to say this is what revival looks like how many of you would make, be able to describe it by show of hands how many of you would be able to articulate to someone what revival looks like all right, so, so that lets us know we've got some focus. We need to bring focus to, amen, what it is that we're asking for, what it is that we are seeking after. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so revival. What is revival? One writer, amen, defined it this way. It's a community saturated with God saturated with God the presence of God hallelujah the spirit of God the presence of God is is evident and it is it saturates the entire community anybody believe that God has ordained revival for Bessemer hallelujah anybody believe God has ordained revival for this region my God, hallelujah. Anybody believe God has ordained revival for, amen, Jefferson County. And it spills over into Shelby County and Chilton County and Coleman County. Hallelujah, warrior, Alabama. Hallelujah. Anybody believe that God has the power to revive this state from the northernmost border to the southernmost border. From the easternmost border to the westernmost border. Amen. God has the ability, just like like we saw, amen, the incident on Saturday go viral. Don't you believe that God has the same, more power? I'm not even going to say the same power. God has more power, hallelujah, to highlight and to advertise revival when he's among his people. We got to get focused on the right things. Let me calm down a little bit. We got to get focused on the right things. Hallelujah. Can y'all say that with me? We must get focused on the right things. So when God saturates a community, oh Lord, I praise you. Remember how Moses had the tabernacle constructed. Y'all remember that from the Old Testament. Moses had the tabernacle constructed. And after the tabernacle was constructed, amen, uh, they were in the tent of congregation. And the scripture declares that the presence of the Lord descended upon them, oh Lord, I praise you, in the form of a cloud. Amen. The cloud filled the space where they were so much so that the ministers could not even minister 
They couldn't even go in. I know a lot of people like to deal with that and, and think that, you know, that just deals with preaching. No, no, no. It's beyond preaching. They wasn't preaching like that in the Old Testament time. Their ministry was to go in, hallelujah, and offer sacrifices unto the Lord. But isn't it amazing, hallelujah, before the first praise song can go up, the presence of the Lord has already descended. Lord, I praise your name. Isn't that amazing? Before the sermon can be preached in our services today, Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord has already descended. He comes in and he takes control. He comes in and he does what he wants to do. Amen. Hallelujah. But, but simply uh, uh, coming to church and just expecting anything to happen. Let me say it this way. Coming to church and we have not consecrated ourselves throughout the week. Hmm? Coming to church and we have not done our part, hallelujah, to worship the Lord and experience personal revival. But we're going to come into God's house and just expect he's going to show up and do what we command him to do. That, it doesn't work that way. God is a God of relationship. He wants us to spend time with him. This is how we're going to experience revival. We spend time in the presence of God. Because here, I come to understand, if I don't know his presence outside, I'm certainly, <laughs> certainly not going to know his presence when I come inside. Hello, somebody. I cannot, if, if I'm not praying at home, who am I to try to pray here? If I'm not spending time in the word outside of this building, how do you think it's right for me to come into the building and think I'm going to preach somebody into salvation? Come on, you anointed saints of God. You Holy Ghost filled people. Hallelujah. How can you witness to somebody what the word says when you're not reading the word? How can you pray for an individual and believe and receive results of prayer instantaneously and suddenly? How can this happen when we are not spending time in our closet? And I'm not talking about a physical closet, but what I'm saying, your secret place. Oh, God, I praise you. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, if we're not in our secret places, then how do we expect God, hallelujah, to meet us in the open? This is what I love about it. This is what I love about it. God will manifest in the presence, in the presence of people. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He will manifest in the presence of people what he prepared in the absence of people. Uh oh, can y'all repeat that? God will manifest in the presence of people. Come on, somebody. What he has prepared in the absence of people. Oh, God, I praise your name. I wish y'all would say that with me. God will manifest. God will make known. God will present in the presence of people what he's prepared in the absence of people. Come on, somebody. I don't wait to get to church and get charged up. Hello, somebody. I don't wait to get to church and get my sermon. I don't wait to get to church, hallelujah, and get the lesson that I'm going to teach. Now, can God speak in that moment and change the direction? Absolutely. But that's not what I'm living by. I'm living by preparation. I'm preaching from preparation. I'm teaching from preparation. We sing. Come on, Vanessa. We sing from preparation. We worship from preparation. She can't come up here on Sunday and she hadn't been to the choir rehearsal. Come on. She only listened to the song when they were teaching it at choir rehearsal. No, that's not how that works. We ought to be willing to give God more, hallelujah, than what we give others. Lord, I praise your name. All right, y'all. Y'all getting quiet on me. Let me move on. Let me move on. So a community saturated with God but if the community is going to be saturated with God guess who needs to be saturated first I need to be saturated you need to be saturated the church Lord I praise you the church has to have the presence of God what are we offering people if we don't have his presence what can we offer to anyone when we don't even have God himself with us Peter said to the man lying at the gate called beautiful, silver and gold have I none. I don't have what you're looking for. Y'all hear that? I don't have 
what you're looking for. Better have what you need. <laughs> All right, y'all going to talk back to me? I don't have what you're looking for. Better have what you need. Because what you need exceeds your expectation. He expected coins. But what did he receive? Ability. Come on. He wanted aid, but he received ability. Y'all see it? He wanted aid. Help me by give me, giving me money. But God exceeded his expectation. This, listen. Philippians, not Philippians, Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 19. Now unto him who is able to do what? Exceeding abundantly. Above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works. That's the nature of God. That's the character of God. He's always going to overdo it. Y'all you, 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 have those friends, they always extra and over the top. Everything they do, they got cream on the top. Everything they do is too much sauce. It's running off the plate because they just that extra. But that's God. He's just extra. Because he'll never be outdone, Sister Sprinkler. He, he will never be outdone. There's nobody that can match God. Hallelujah. There's nobody that can, oh Lord, overcome what he's able to do. Let me move on. Let me move on. It's not a time of religious entertainment. We're talking about revival. What revival is. It's a community saturated with God. Somebody will throw your hands up and say, Lord, saturate this community with your presence. Saturate this community with your spirit. Saturate me, God. Hallelujah. Pour your spirit into me. Fill me again, oh God. Saturate me with your presence, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God is here, you don't have to have a three-piece band. You don't have to have, hallelujah, uh, voices for every part of the song. When God comes, he's the show all by himself. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. He's there. He doesn't need any help. He doesn't need any aid. Come on, somebody. When he comes, he brings the total package. Somebody shout glory. Oh, God, I feel your presence. Oh, yeah. I feel your presence here right now. So, so people come not to be entertained, but they come to see God. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Hallelujah. The, that you've been praying. You've been fasting. You've been seeking God. You've been, been in the word of God. You've been studying. You've been sh telling God this one scripture that he's given to your spirit, man. And what do you do? You come with an expectancy. For God to move in your midst and to, to help you. So I'm not here, hallelujah, to see who can sing the best. It's not about who can preach the best. But what it is about is God, hallelujah, being in the midst and hallelujah, supplying my every need. Hallelujah, meeting my spiritual needs and giving unto me the very thing that gives me life. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Revival is a place where the wind of God blows. Woo. The wind of God blows. Somebody ought to say, Lord, breathe on me. Come on, come on, tell him, Lord, breathe on me. Lord, I feel your presence here right now. Come on, just lift your hands right there. Those of you that are online, if you're in a place where you can begin to worship, just begin to tell him, Lord, breathe on me. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your breath breathe on us tonight. Ha, ah, thank you, God. Let your breath breathe on us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, look at this. When God created, or rather, when he formed man from the dust of the ground, he was just, hallelujah, of body. It was a frame. It was a, it was, uh, if you will, it was infrastructure infrastructure but until he breathed his spirit into the infrastructure he was dead that was no life in him come on Ezekiel 37 the bones were dry the scripture said lo they were very dry but when he prophesied to them infrastructure came are y'all hearing me 
The infrastructure came into place. I, I, I fear that sometimes we're so focused on infrastructure, we exclude the spirit. We got everything organized. We got this ministry, and we got this ministry, and we got this group that serves, and we got this group that does this, and this group that does that, but we don't have the Spirit of God. Who are we without the Spirit? We are dead. I'm going to tell you who we are. We are dead. All right, I wish y'all would holler that back at, at me this, this evening. Without the Spirit, we are we're dead. We got to have God's Spirit. Hallelujah. That's why I'm convinced God can take just a few with his spirit and accomplish much more than a vast number of people. Hello, somebody. All right, y'all want to talk about something else, I guess. Let me move on. We see a going of God among his people. I think about the day of Pentecost. That was infrastructure. There were 500 that were in the upper room, but by the 10th day, that number had decreased to 120. Isn't that in your Bible? Hallelujah. But what happened? The, the God begins to put his spirit in the infrastructure. Just like he formed man in Genesis 1, he forms his church in Acts 1. Hallelujah. Y'all didn't catch it. I said just like he formed man in Genesis 2, he forms the church in Acts 1. And he breathes on the day of Pentecost. He breathes into the nostrils of the church and the church becomes a living organism. Oh, God, I praise you. And the thing been growing ever since. Come on, somebody. The church has been growing ever since. Why? Because he said the gates of hell won't prevail against it. Let me move on. Let me move on. So there is an awareness of God in the community. There's an awareness of God. Number three, number three, this is a season ordained by God in which the Holy Spirit awakens the church. Here's my favorite part. It awakens the church to evangelize the sinner. Y'all hear that? That means what? We tell everywhere we go, we all tap into, now everybody's not an evangelist, by grace, by gift. Come on, he ascended on high, he left, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. Everybody is not in Ephesians 4 and 11. But guess what? Everybody has an evangelistic ability because the great evangelist lives in everybody that has his spirit. Oh, you ought to throw your hands up and say, I might not have the gift, but I have the nature. Come on, come on online. Y'all throw your hands up there. Put it in the comments tonight. I may not have the gift, but what? But I have the nature. I have the nature, I have the nature, because there's something in me that wants to tell people about Jesus. There's something in me. All right, let me move on. All right, so we're talking about, we're talking about being conditioned for a revival. Saints, again, we've got to make sure that our minds have been transformed. Be not, we talked about this, be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to the world. Don't take on the shape of the world. Don't take on the mind, the nature, and the attitude of the world. But what? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If we're going to see revival, we've got to have the mind of the revivalist. All right. A lot of people want to say, no, we've got to have a mind for a revival. No, you need the mind of the revivalist. Come on, somebody. Because the, the mind of the revivalist is what? All souls are mine. Hello, somebody. All souls are mine. Let's move on. Let's move on. I told y'all we're going to get to that third outline, and that's why I'm pressing the gas to get to tonight. Hallelujah. So we've got to have the mind of Christ if we are going to see revival. That means what? Our minds have to be conditioned to think like him. 
I came not, remember what he said, to destroy men's lives, but I came to save them. And so if salvation is the portion, if salvation is the will of God for every individual, for all mankind, then that means what? He is all inclusive and he's never exclusive. But whosoever will. See, here's the thing. You got to be persuaded enough. You've got to be persuaded enough of the hope that lives within you to convince them by your testimony that he wants you to be saved and he's able to do it for you. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. All right. Now, uh, I wish I had time to talk about David, but I don't. I don't because we got to move on. Now, let's see. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 53. The redeemed... Must have what? Must resemble, thank you, the Redeemer. The redeemed must resemble the Redeemer. That means what? I've got to have the spirit of Christ. I've got to have the mind of Christ. And not only that, I must model the Redeemer. Hmm? I must model the Redeemer. The Lord put it in my spirit tonight as we were praying to pray against the spirit of unforgiveness. You know, that, that is a spirit that will kill you. That spirit will kill you because what it does, number one, it hinders your prayers. Huh? Y'all believe that? It hinders you. When you pray, forgive. Isn't that what the Bible said? Forgive us our debts and lead us not into temptation. That's what a lot of people are doing now. Forgive us our debts. Lead us not into temptation. Because <laughs> I want to be offended. I want to be offended. I want to walk around, hallelujah, with people, with, with a mindset, a negative mindset about people because of what they did to me. And all along, that unforgiveness is causing your insides to be eaten up. Hello. I want to be offended. I want to live in the spirit of offense because... It gives me a badge to be mad, to be angry, to not talk to people, to mistreat people, to not love people. See how that one spirit brings so many other spirits with him? I'm bitter because of what they did to me. But let me help you understand, what they did to you was never designed to make you bitter. It was to make you better. It was to make you more like Jesus. Come on, somebody. It was made, hallelujah, it was, it was done to you to help you to say to them, hallelujah, I forgive you. And I love you. And I bless you. I speak a blessing over my enemy's life. You ought to begin to speak a blessing over the life of your enemy right now. You know why I'm so quiet? You know why I'm so quiet in here right now? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know why it's so quiet? Because that shocked you. That takes you out of the mindset that you've been in. But I'm serious, saints. This is what he said. Bless them that what? Curse you. Pray for them that what? Despitefully misuse you and mistreat you. Hmm? If we're going to have revival, we got to clean the closets out. Come on, we got to get rid of the skeletons. We got we to call the zombies out. We got to call everything out of us. Come on, y'all know zombies just walk around. That's what some people do. They just walk around because unforgiveness got them. All right, that, let me move on. Let me move on. Say, Lord, help our pastor. We got to model the behaviors of the Redeemer. Are y'all hearing me? When Jesus was on that cross, he didn't say, I curse every one of you. I sent every one of you to hell because 
you did this to me and you did that to me. He didn't say any of that. He said, Father, forgive them. <laughs> For they know not what they do. You know it takes faith to forgive people. Y'all better talk to me here tonight. It takes faith to know that I've been forgiven. So it means what? It takes the same faith to forgive those that have offended me. I got to go face my offenders tomorrow. But I'm going to bless them in Jesus' name. I'm going to bless them in Jesus' name. Y'all better talk to me in here. I need you to pray for me. But I'm going to bless them in Jesus' name. Why is that? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah, somebody. Shout glory in this place. Come on, say it. Glory to Jesus. Now, why is it that we've got to model the Redeemer? This, this is getting good to me right here. Why is it that they have to see Jesus in us? Well, I read a book that says it like this. Moses saw the pattern of things in heaven with the expectation to build them in the earth. Y'all follow me? He went up on the mount and God began to give him a vision and Moses became just like Noah, a spiritual architect. He, he received a divine blueprint. He received, hallelujah, the pattern and the model of things that were in heaven and he was to replicate it here in the earth. Now say this with me, the pattern precedes the glory. The pattern has to be right before the glory can be manifested. See, here's the thing, Vanessa. Why would God send his glory into the earth, but nothing was here? <laughs> the infrastructure was not in place in the earth as his glory had infrastructure in heaven. Y'all see it? If there were a mercy seat and cherubims that were there around, hallelujah, or rather there at the, where the glory of God could sit, how could the glory come down to where Moses was but there wasn't an infrastructure like God showed him? Are y'all hearing me tonight? So in other words, before the glory can come, we got to follow the pattern. Hello, somebody. Y'all see this? Before we can have revival, then that means what? We got to look like the reviver. We got to look like the great revivalist. We've got to look like a, we've got to build what God has shown us right here. Come on, somebody. This is, this is our model. This is our pattern. Hello, somebody. We could go through the Lord's prayer and, and, and tell you real quickly, the disciples' prayer, whatever you call it, uh, Matthew chapter 6. We could show you real quickly what it means to pray. I'm not going to go there tonight. What I'm trying to demonstrate to you is this. If we are going to experience revival, everywhere that Jesus went, the spirit of revival, the mantle of revival was upon him. Come on, somebody. If he was there, people were revived. People were, their lives were changed. And you know what God told me? God told me that this revival is going to be marked by the supernatural. People are going to know it because everywhere you look, everywhere God is present, what's happening? The supernatural. Signs, wonders, miracles, word of prophecy, word of knowledge. Word of wisdom, laying on of hands, sick being healed, gifts of healing. Come on, tongues, interpretation of tongues. Come on, come on, y'all help me in here. Everywhere we look, we're going to see the supernatural, and people are going to know that it's God because no man could do it. Are y'all all right? Because look at what happened in Acts. I'm trying to move on. Acts chapter 2. They heard something. They heard something. They heard unlearned people 
speaking in their language. And what did they say? The wonderful works of God. This, I'm telling you, I can see it now. There's a lady coming in the door. I see it in the spirit. There's a lady coming in the door. And the doctors could not do it. But God is going to. God is going to. I, I feel it in the Holy Ghost. I see it in the Spirit. I see her coming through the door right now. Hallelujah. You ought to begin to rejoice. Hallelujah. And people are going to know that this is God. Lord, I praise your name. This is not to make the church go viral. No, this is about inviting the presence of God into the earth realm. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise your holy name. Hallelujah. But if we don't follow the pattern, saints, if we don't follow the pattern, if we don't deny the flesh, if we don't change our minds and change our way of thinking and start thinking and seeing from God's perspective, if we don't allow the Spirit of God to work through us and in us, if we don't allow this to happen, then guess what? We can't expect revival. We can't expect it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. I got a little more time. Ooh, I praise you, Jesus. Come on, Isaiah 53. I told y'all to go home and study this one last week. I hope you did. Isaiah, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Isaiah 53 from the message translation. Let's start at verse number 7, Tyra. I'm going to go down through verse number 12. Hallelujah. He was beaten. He was tortured. But he didn't say a word. I wish they would. I wish they would come in my face with that. I'm going to tell them where the bus stop. He was beaten. He was tortured. But he didn't say a word. Read. Like a lamb taken to be slaughtered. Now, how rebellious is a lamb? How many of you have ever seen a lamb? Come on now. Even Jesus gave us the analogy. The lambs he put on the right. The goats he put on the left. Now, will a goat obey? Will a lamb follow you? Yes. Because that's the nature of the lamb. But look at what he said. Like a lamb taken to be slaughtered and like a sheep being sheared, he took it all in what? He took it in silence. He took it in silence. Now, they do one thing wrong to us. We're ready to write the governor's off. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Meekness is not weakness. We are not doormats. Hmm? Yes, we have rights. But your rights can never override the will of God for you to walk through the season of suffering. You can, you can write, you can do everything you need to, but if this is the season that God has ordained for you to walk through a trial, you got to humble yourself. For as much then as Christ, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 1, for as much then as Christ, no, stay here. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, we are to arm ourselves likewise with the same man. He that suffers in the flesh has ceased from sin. All right, let's read a little further. Justice miscarried. And he was led off. Did he deserve what he got? That was a miscarriage of justice. Have you ever been there? You suffered for righteousness sake. Come on, the, 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 the wicked and the evil, your foes, they put a burden on you 
They mislabeled you. They mischaracterized you. Come on, I know I'm not the only one that's ever walked through that. Come on, somebody. They lied on you. They ostracized you. They criticized you. Come on, they called you everything but a child of God. They even mischaracterized, hallelujah, the fact that you testified of being a child of God. And they put an undue burden on you. Justice miscarried. Same thing with Jesus. But what? He was led off. And did anyone really know what was happening? He died without a thought for his own welfare. Now that's selfless, selflessness. Beaten body for the sins of my people. They buried him with the wicked, threw him in a grave with the rich man, even though he'd never heard a soul or said one word that wasn't true. Verse number 10. Still, it's what God had in mind all along. Now think about that. Think about that. God had this suffering in mind all along. That he was going to be beaten for us. I'm going to say it in the King James. That way y'all can catch up with me. Wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All of this took place because what? God foreordained it. To get us out of the mess that we were in. God said, I've got to take you through this. Come on somebody. Well, all we can say, God himself said, i got to go through this. God had this in mind all along to do what? To crush him with pain. The plan was that he give himself as an offering for sin so that he'd see life come from it. Life, life, and more life. The thief cometh not. But for to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life Life and more life. Come on, somebody. Life and that more abundantly. Life, life, and more life. You ought to say, I speak life tonight. Come on, life, life, and more life. Life, life, and more life. Y'all ain't having church in here with me tonight. Life, life, and more life. He came to give me abundant life. That's, that's the genesis of this ministry. God said in Psalm 36 and 9, woke me up one morning and said, and with thee, he was talking about himself, but he's with us, and with thee is a fountain of life. A fountain that never runs dry. Come on, somebody. Y'all talk to me in here. And with thee is a fountain of life. And so that means what? He gives us life, life, and more life. How many of you living better than you ever have? Come on, even if it don't look like it right now. How many of you know you're on your way to better? You're on your way to good. You're on your way to great. Hallelujah, somebody. Tell God thank you. Come on, tell God thank you. All right, so he says, and God's plan will deeply prosper through him. Out of that terrible travail of soul, he'll see that it's worth it and be glad he did it. Have you ever been through a trial and you wondered, God, what is going on? What, what did I do to deserve this? What did I do to have to walk through this? But then on the other side of the trial, you don't even remember what the pain felt like. You don't even remember what the suffering felt like. Hallelujah. But then you turn around and say, what? It was worth it all. I'm glad he put me through that. I'm glad I had to walk through that. I'm glad. Lord, how much? I'm glad. Here we go. He didn't answer my prayer to pull me out of it. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen in here tonight. Huh? I'm glad he didn't answer my prayer. You know why he didn't answer your prayer? Because it wasn't in alignment with his will. Lord, have mercy. Come on, somebody. Therefore, he says... Uh, or rather, uh, out of that, wait a minute, where are we at? Where are we at? Through what he experienced, my righteous one, my servant, will make many righteous ones as he himself carries the burden of their sins. Therefore, I'll reward him extravagantly. The best of everything. The highest honors. Come on, somebody. 
the highest honors because he looked death in the face and didn't flinch. Because he embraced the company of the lowest. He took on his own shoulders the sin of the many. He took up the cause of all the black sheep. How many of you know, I don't care how favored you are in your family. In the eyes of God, you were still a black sheep. Rejected. Huh? No relationship. Dead in trespasses and sins, the Bible says. But now when you believed on Jesus Christ, he raised you up and caused you to live. He raised you up and caused you, hallelujah, to be his own. And therefore the spirit in us now cries, Abba, Father. Aliens from the covenant of promise. Lord, I praise your name. I don't have time. I don't have time. Is that the end of Yes, that's the end of that. So, so what do you say? You see what Jesus went through? Most importantly, did you see the attitude? <laughs> Come on now, y'all don't get, don't get quiet on me now. Did you see the attitude he exhibited when he went through it? Silence. Huh? Didn't y'all see that in there? He rejoiced. He was glad he went through it. Never said a mumbling word. All right. So you see that. So that means what? We got to be just like him God blessed him extravagantly gave him the highest honors wherefore y'all know what Philippians said God had highly exalted him given him a name which is above every I feel the Holy Ghost right here giving him a name which is above how many of you believe your name is getting ready to be exalted Come on, somebody, your name is getting ready to be known. Come on. He said, I will take men out of the dust and make them princes. Come on, somebody. He said promotion doesn't come from the south, doesn't come from the east or the west, but God is the judge. I'll take down one and I'll set up another. He is God and he's justified in everything that he does. They may have scandalized your name, but you better get ready for God to do something different with it. Thank you, Lord. Gave him the highest honor. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. That at the name Jesus, every knee must bow. Things in the earth, things under the earth. Hallelujah, things in heaven. And every tongue must confess that he is the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. So what does that mean? Just like he was crucified. And after the crucifixion, he was glorified. Huh? Crucified in order to be glorified. Crucified. Y'all say that with me. Crucified in order to be glorified. What did Paul tell him? Crucify that flesh. If you want the glory of God in your life, you got to get rid of everything related to this flesh nature. Hmm? If you want God to glorify you, you've got to crucify yourself. I've got to give up everything that's not like God. Can we shout hallelujah? Can we shout hallelujah? We got to put on the new nature. I'm closing. Y'all remember the temptation in the wilderness? He said, if you're the son of God, if you know who you are, I, I, I can't stay here long. But you know what the greatest enemy of the individual is? You don't know who you are. And you don't know your own identity. You're going to always try to change and fit where you really don't even belong. Hmm? Am I right? You won't surely die. But you'll be like God. Knowing the difference between good and evil. He didn't want us to know evil. Obviously, he didn't want us to know good. He wanted us to know him. Come on, somebody. I just want you to know me. That's why Paul said, I've got to know him. 
in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his son. I've got to get all of me out of me so I can have all of him in me. I just want to know God. Anybody got that attitude tonight? I, I, I just want to know God. I, I just, you, you can have all the rest of the stuff. I just really want to know God. Somebody shout glory. glory. If you are the son of God, if you are who you say you are, let me help you understand something too. You don't have to prove to the devil who you are. The very fact that he comes to you to ask you, do you really know who you are, means he already knows who you are. And if he doesn't know you, he going to tell you. Because he said, Pete, uh, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? You don't have that kind of authority. Come on, somebody. He knows the sons of God. Come on, somebody. I said he knows the sons of God. How do I know that he knows the sons of God? Because the scripture said rejoice. Don't rejoice because the devils were subject unto you through my name. Because you have my name. Because you bear my marks in your body. The devil already knows who you are. Just like God knows you are his, the devil knows you are his. He said but rejoice. Because your name is written in heaven. Come on, somebody, rejoice. Because your name is written in heaven. This is just a byproduct of your name. Be Lord, I thank you. This is just a byproduct of your name being published in heaven. Is your name in the book tonight. These signs shall follow them that believe. Those that believe follow Jesus. Those that believe have the spirit of Jesus living on the inside of them. And so because of that, hallelujah, these signs follow. First thing, in my name, they are cast out devils. You get the devil out, you can speak with new tongues. You get the devil out, you can take up deadly things and it won't hurt you. you. You get the devil out, my God, I praise your holy name. You can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Why? Because that spirit is gone now. Somebody shout glory. So we've got to, we've got to be sure of our identity. I don't have time to finish that up. But we've got to be sure of our identity. I'm going to stop right there. It's 8 o'clock. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop because if I go any further, I'm not going to cut off. Hallelujah. And the children are back in school. And the teachers are back at work. And the administrators are back at work. Let's stand on our feet. Any questions, any comments, any thoughts from anyone before we dismiss? Amen. Anything from the lesson that you gained tonight? I'm not going to do like we did. Amen. In Graceville. Everybody tell me one thing you learned. About the lesson. I'm not going to do that tonight. Amen. Let's rest on our feet. Let's rest on our feet. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody just give the Lord praise right there. How you doing? Come on, saints. Just, just begin to praise the Lord. Begin to glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Dabamashai. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.